Now I'm going to start to talk about the two-dimensional equilibrium. In statics, all we care about is that we want to make sure if a subject is stay at rest, it just remain at rest, it doesn't move. So to do that, we are going to make sure that all the forces applied on that object is in balance and they are not making it move. So in two-dimensional formula, if you have any object, all the forces that apply, again, should be cancelled each other. So what we have, we know that we have the sigma f equal to zero. So all the forces, the vector format, should cancel each other. But in general, when we are dealing with the 2D format, we, can, we are going to simplify it uh, rather than working with the vector. We prefer to work with the scalar uh, or the magnitude of vector. So we can write that equation as sigma f x i plus sigma f y j plus zero. Just I rewrite that as a it's a component on the i and j direction or on the x and y direction. And then to make sure this equation is satisfied, we are gonna have we are gonna have to set to make sure this one is zero and this one is zero. So sigma f x should be zero and sigma f y should be zero. So in 2D when we want to make sure that the object is stay where it is and all the forces are balanced or cancel each other, these are the equations we are gonna use. Two equations. So all the forces in the x direction should cancel each other, all the forces in the y direction should cancel each other. How we do that? How we do all those calculations? There are four steps that we do that. The very first step, we draw the free body diagram. And then after we draw the free body diagram, we put all the external forces on that free body diagram. We put all the active forces and reactive forces. And the third, after we have that, we find the component of all forces on the X and Y uh, direction and after we find the magnitude of all forces or the components of all forces on the x and y direction we make we add the, all the forces on the x direction and make them make sure they are zero and then we add all the forces on the y direction and make them and make sure all of them are zero so there are four steps when we are working with 2d problems and want to make sure that the particle are stay uh, or the forces are balanced each other and for a particle stay at rest doesn't move. So the very first step is that we just draw a free body diagram. As remember uh, when we were talking about free body diagram, it's not disconnected the, uh, the an object from any support that hold it in place, just an object itself nothing connected to that and draw that after that just uh, apply all external forces on a uh, free body diagram So after we draw the free body, after we draw an object, we disconnect everything from an object. Then we are going to put all the forces on uh, that. We apply all the forces on that. The forces are active forces, which are the forces that want to make it move, and reactive forces, which are the forces that wants to hold it in a place. So we put all those forces uh, on that uh, object. Then on the third, step, we find. Uh, X and Y components of all forces. So, if in other words, we, we go uh, force by force and we find the X and Y component of that force, and until we have the X and Y components for all the forces, and at the, the end we make sure that all the forces at the we write all the forces at the x direction we add them together and make them zero 
and we write all the forces in the y direction and make them zero. So make sure that all the forces in the x direction cancel each other, all the forces in the y direction cancel each other. So eventually it's going to give us two equations, most of the time two unknown. And we can solve, we can find any unknown we have in the problem from these two equations. Sometimes one equation is enough, sometimes we have to uh, solve the equation, solve both equations uh, simultaneously. Um, make sure that you know how your calculator can handle that is relatively easy if you have the calculator so you can uh, put uh, the coefficient in your calculator and calculator can solve uh, gives you the answer for uh, two equation two unknown uh, simultaneously or if you get to three to four three equation three unknown simultaneously and it's very straightforward Okay, now let's look at an example to see how uh, we will use the... Okay, now let's look at the 2D example and see how we can see if an object in 2D problem are in equilibrium and how we are going to write an equation to find if the forces are in balance. So assume that we we'll have a boxes here, that this box is, is point C and it has a hundred Newton uh, its weight is hundred Newton and it's connected with the rope here the ring and there is a rope here connected to a wall at point B and then you have a rope goes up there and goes up there connected to the wall on point A and there is a pulley here which hold that uh, rope in place um, and if this angle is 60 degrees um, and this point is oh <coughs> so if we have these uh, box connected with three ropes uh, one rope connected directly to that and the other two ropes connected to point O. We want to find the tension in rope OB and the tension in rope OA. So we want the T O B and the T O A. We want to find these two uh, unknown. Uh, uh, to find. So Again, want to do that, we are going to go through the couple of uh, the same step. Draw the free body diagram, put the external forces, and write the, um, <coughs> uh, find the component on the x and y direction, and then write the sigma, f, sigma fx equal to 0, sigma fy equal to 0. So the very first um, um, component I'm going to draw is I'm gonna to draw the uh, free body diagram for this box. Uh, this is the um, very first step when you're getting familiar, you're gonna do that, but later on probably you don't do that, you just skip to the next step, but I'm gonna put it there. So the free body diagram for the box is like that. So nothing connected, just an object. And there are two forces applying on that. One, uh, active forces, so which is going to be its weight, which is 100 Newton. And another one is the tension in OC, which hold it in a place. So the first one, we uh, draw the free body diagram with all the external, then we put the all the external forces on that. So this is the first and second step. And then we find all the component in the X and Y direction. Here, all the components are in the y direction. There's no uh, component in the x direction, so we don't need to do anything. And after that, we write sigma f x equal to zero, sigma f y equal to zero. For this case, don't have any forces in the x direction, so we don't need to write any sigma f x equal to zero. We only need to write sigma f y equal to zero for that case. So it's going to tell us T O C minus. Uh, W is zero. So TOC, because it's uh, along the um, 
assuming that we consider uh, this is the y direction the positive y direction so because it's along the y direction positive y is positive and this one the w goes down so it's a negative so it tells us that toc is double is equal to w which is 100 newton um, so that's the very first step we find the tension in toc the uh, problem didn't ask us to do that but we need to do that for the next step because we need it the next is that we are uh, to draw the free body diagram for that point O. So if I go there and draw the free body diagram for the point, for that ring at the O. So if I draw that, it's going to be there. And then only an object. So we are not going to put anything else on the an object. And then we are going to put all the external forces on that. For that one, we have the three external forces. So uh, the first one is uh, TOC, which is going to be like that. And the other one is TOB. And this one is TOA. One thing is that when you're putting the forces, if you know if you don't know the direction of the forces, just assume a direction. It doesn't matter if the if the value comes out negative, so you know that the direction you assume uh, was wrong, so you choose the opposite direction. But don't worry about that. Among these three, because these are the three, because all these three are rope, and we know the rope only considered uh, only tolerate the tension, so these are the correct direction. But if it comes and you don't know, if it comes to the condition you don't know, just put, uh, just assume a direction, put it there when you're uh, doing the calculation. If uh, the assumption is not wrong, the value would become negative and you know that the direction you chose was not right. So among this, we know already the TOC is 100 Newton. And remember here, here TOC connected on top of the box is like that so it's, uh, it's, when we put it there it's, it's like that and then we put the opposite there because uh, they are going to cancel each other if you uh, all if you ever confused you can draw the free body diagram for that rope but you know that you always know you already know that that's going to pull that ring down so you just put it like it's pulling it down and then the same for the other now i have that if this is my gonna be my x direction and this is gonna be the y direction and i know uh, that this is 60 degrees uh, that i have the next step that we are going to do is just we are going to find the all forces component on the x and y direction so TOB is already on the X direction, TOC is already on the Y direction, so we don't need to do anything about that, but we need to find the X and Y component for TOA. So to find the uh, Y component for TOA, TOA is uh, TOA at the Y component is TOA uh, sine 60 and this one is TOA is TOA cosine 60 so this is a TOA sine 60 TOA cosine 60 now that we have them on we have all the forces uh, on the X and Y direction we find their component now we're going to write the sigma fx equal to zero, sigma fy equal to zero. So uh, if I write the sigma fx equal to zero, what I'm going to have is TOB, which is positive because its, it's direction is uh, on the direction of x1, minus, minus because its direction is against the positive direction of x. So it has an opposite direction of the positive x, so I will put minus. It's going to be TOA cosine 60 degrees. And we don't have any other forces in the x direction, so it's going to be zero. 
The same we are going to write in, in sigma f y is equal to 0. So we know that the t o a sine 60, which is positive because it's along the positive direction of y, minus t o c because it's uh, moving, is pointing downward, which is negative uh, against that uh, is the opposite of y direction, minus 100 is zero. So we have two equations and two unknown and simply we can solve these two equations uh, two unknown and by solving them we get that uh, the force in the OA is going to be 115.47 Newton and T in OB the tension in OB is 57.70 Newton. So make sure I write everything right. So this is how we uh, do that. The one more time, just simply go through. Any time that we have a problem like that in the two D, you draw the free body diagram of a object, pull all the put all the external forces on that object, find find all the components of all forces along the x and y direction. And then write sigma f sigma f x equal to zero sigma f y equal to zero. It, it gives you sets of equation in two D two equation three D three equations, and then you can solve them simultaneously and uh, get and solve it for all unknown and get the unknown. And again, as I said, you can simply put these values into a calculator um, and gives you the answer.